Ah, there we go. All right. Well, welcome to the country bicycle painting. Um, so the paint colors are in the chat. And we're going to start the drawing first. And I know that June is going to do watercolor, which is going to be super cool. I can't wait to see what it looks like. Um, so let me move my blank canvas over. And let me also make sure that I am in view here. Um, this is sponsored by the Free Library of New Hope and Solbury. So thank you to them. Um, this recording will go out this evening uh, to Sam Farrow, and he will get it out when he's able to, to everybody that registered. And so we are going to get started here. And I'm just going to adjust my camera a little bit. Just a little more. Okay, so we are going to start with the drawing. And go back to my sticker view. So basically, we've got a circle for the bicycle right towards the bottom left corner of your canvas. And everything else is a close up view. And I'm just going to adjust one more time. There we go. I wasn't getting the, the close up that I needed. It's funny when you haven't been on Zoom even for a week, it's like I forget. <laughs> All right. So, so we're going to go down to the bottom left and we're going to create a circle for our bicycle or bicycle tire, I should say. And so we actually start at the bottom. I'm going to move my light a little bit. Now, if you have something to trace that's circular, that can be helpful. I'm going to try and go darker on this because I notice it's not showing up as well on Zoom. Huh, that's a little better. And then, so that's the outside of the tire. And then we're going to draw two more circles inside. Here's the next one. And then one more for the inside of the tire. And it might take you a little, little bit to kind of iron out the circle or circles, I should say. So just take your time. And then I've got to kind of round out mine a little better. It's kind of always best to make sure you work that out in pencil first so that by the time you get to the paint, you've got a little more of an edge for yourself. I mean, not an edge, but more of a chance where it's gonna be more circular. <laughs> That's kind of what I meant. All right. I need my tire to be just a little more wider. So I'm taking the time to do that. Over on the right side. Much better.
and erase any of your sketchy lines so that you don't get confused about how thick to paint when you're ready. I'm still taking a look kind of at my one circle here. Okay. And then when you are finished and satisfied with that, we actually draw a circle in the middle of all those circles for the part of the bike that holds it together. And then I'm going to move this over just a little bit so you can start to see the other side. Because then what we do is we start off with the bicycle part right where this middle part is for the tire. And we go in a slanted line for the handlebars and the rest of the bike. So you do go up straight, but it's not a straight line like up and down, it's slanted. And then you go up and curve to the right for the handlebars and off to the side, like so. And then we can draw the other parts of the bike coming off of this, but it's kind of nice to draw the shape of this first and then the parts that are going to be attached to it. Also, when you're ready, you want to make sure to erase the bicycle tire lines that are then, you know, inside your shape of the sort of bicycle um, sort of the bicycle handle and then you can start making the details of the rest of the bicycle off to the right here. So you can see that I'm starting to now sketch in the top portion, right? Here is the other handlebar over here. And then if we go down further, you're gonna sketch two lines of the bars. And again, going off of to the right of your canvas. So they kind of disappear off, off view. Like so. And then we create the basket, which is kind of a just a simple shape. Everything else, all the details are done with the paint. So we have a basic basket shape that is attached to your bicycle. And then you can start drawing in some shapes of the flowers. Now, they don't have to be the flowers that I drew. Mine are just really kind of basic and made up. If you want to do more like roses or 
I don't know. Other flowers? <laughs> but you can draw in the shapes. Up top. So that you have an idea of where they're going to fall. Mine are sort of made up flowers. They're like in between roses and mm, not a daisies. I'm just making them up. You know, I just thought of this. I should have done a fall basket, a fall country basket painting. See, this is what happens to me. I I do all my ideas because um I just sent the librarians my the fall and winter beginning of winter programs and then it starts getting my brain moving and then all these ideas like flood my brain but it's not until I torture myself <laughs> and I'm like oh no this isn't good enough I don't like this idea, but I do it. And then other really fun ideas come to me. I don't know if other people work that way, but I do. It's like, I should probably start months in advance, way longer than I do, because it takes my brain a while to like be creative. I'm not very creative. I know that sounds strange for an artist. I'm, I'm not as creative, or it doesn't come as easy to me. So just take your time and make sure your shapes are the way you want them that your handlebars look like handlebars in the sense that they're curving. You can add some details like this, where the metal is meeting up with the handlebars. I mean, I guess it's all sort of metal, but. And then I'm just gonna take one more look at my tire. I feel like I want my tire to be wider than this. Still not wide enough, so I'm gonna fix that. I like a nice wide tire, especially if it's a country bicycle. I don't know why, I feel like, I've seen some of them that have wide tires. Of course, I've seen some of them that are very thin and I wouldn't want to go on bumps with, but <laughs> I think my mom actually has one of those. It's like, it's cute looking, but I don't know that I'd feel safe riding it too many places. Okay, so I'm just readjusting now. Oops. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then again, you're going to take a relook at everything because our next step is the most fun part, I think, the painting part. And I always tell people, because I've taught this a few times, they don't have to copy off of my background if they don't want to. Um, I had somebody do polka dots, which looked really cool. And they even changed the colors. So... You know, you could do more of, um, you could do like more of a red. Oh my gosh, your cat is so cute, Joan. I think that's a cat. Oh my gosh. You see her little, e oh, hi. He was sitting on my easel for a while and I couldn't do anything. 
I had to oh, slide I... off and move my easel. I think the cats are, are so funny because they always want to be included. I feel like the dogs, you know, the dogs will kind of sit by you on the floor. But the cats, it's like they've got to be right up against you. That is so cute. Oh. I love it. Okay, so when you are finished with your shapes and you like how everything is looking you're, as far as your drawing part, we then do the background, which is why we use a palette so that we can mix our colors. And really it's a very, this is kind of an abstract painting, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's not abstract. It's um, a very loose painting. You know, the stripes are not perfectly next to each other. They're not in a line right next to each other. So you can have fun. Not that you don't have fun when you're doing it the other way, but you can be a little more free. So I used turquoise and purple. And then I also mixed a bit of white with my purple so that I got more of a lavender. So you can see some lavender here. And then um, that's pretty much what I did for the background. And then I just went go up and down in straight lines. So I'm going to start here on the left. Let me make sure that Everybody can see. All right, I'm going to move the original and move my paint palette because I realized I'm covering up, <laughs> covering up the painting. And I'm going to go closer now to the painting since we are on that part. So, and I like to start off with my, sorry for the adjusting of my camera here. I want to get close enough to the detail. So I'm going to start off on the left side and I'm starting with my flat brush and I'm just kind of going straight down in a bit of a stripe. And then what I'm gonna do, since I've started off with my turquoise, I'm gonna leave room, leave space for the other color. So I wanna pre-plan and leave enough room for the purple. So I'm leaving kind of double the space because there is some room in between each of the stripes. And I'm trying to kind of follow it down, meaning the stripe. You know, going behind the bicycle, making sure, you know, not to stop because the bicycle is in the way. Just taking my time and kind of having fun with it. Oops, to adjust my camera. And put it up a little bit higher so you can see the other side of my canvas here. There we go. And I'm gonna do one more stripe of turquoise on the edge.
I may have to throw one more painting in this weekend and send it out because now I'm kind of thinking, wouldn't it be neat? Well, fall is my favorite time, so I'm always thinking of fall programs, but I think it would be neat with like some leaves flying around the bicycle. And kind of more of, you know, reds and oranges as the colors. I think that would be really neat. Mm -hmm. Oops. Okay. So once we're finished with the first application, we can then go on to the next color, which I use purple and I mix a little bit of white so that my purple is a little bit lighter. The purple that I have is a bit more like violet. And I'm gonna mix a bit of white in there so that it's a little more, yeah, kind of looking for that color, more of a little bit of a lavender, I guess. A little bit of this. Yep, I think that's the color I'm looking for. And then I'm going to repeat that process of the stripes. You know, and you also want to make sure that you're trying to make your stripes follow where you started them. Like, for instance, I have a stripe that starts up top. Right. And then as it goes down, so you can kind of turn the side of your brush at first if you want. It also depends on how thick you want your stripes. I'm going to do the purple a little bit thicker. And just take your time because it's fun. Oops. And you may have to switch to your smaller brush for some of the parts, you know, when you're trying to do the background where the bike is kind of getting in the way. So I'll leave that up to you if you want to do that, or you can just try your best with your flat brush. Just kind of what I do. But my stripes would probably look better on this one if I switched. <laughs> I have to say, I definitely take my time more when I'm doing the samples. I don't know why that is. And then what I kind of do in between, if I still have spaces in between, like I do with this one, this is when I went back and I actually mixed more white in with the purple in order to get an even more lighter color to kind of fill in almost like wallpaper. 
and I didn't mind if the color on the brush was a little bit um, spotty, like it didn't cover the canvas completely, the parts that I'm kind of substituting. And then I'm even gonna go back in with some more turquoise as well. Even on top of that. So it's gonna give it sort of the feel of, you know, again, a very loose background. I'm okay with that. You just want to try and cover as much of the background as you can because it will make it visually interesting. It's also okay at this point if you're not exactly painting perfectly, um, like where, you know, the bicycle parts are coming into the picture because it's okay for right now to kind of paint inside of them. Then of course, when you get to the bicycle parts, you know, you want to be more exact. So now I'm now throwing in some more turquoise with some of the purple still on my brush. To kind of give it a little more of a mixed in look. And I do that to the stripes that I just created with the lavender. I'm just throwing a little bit of kind of some lavender in there, or I'm sorry, some turquoise. Just a little bit. Make it a little bit of fun and loose. So filling in some of the, the gaps in the background. Until you're satisfied with it. Let's take another look. I add a little more purple. I'm going to go back with a little bit of more of some dark purple or violet. And I'm mushed in here. Again, just because it gives it a little bit more pop.
And so again, when you're happy with it, we can then move on to the basket. which is at first brown with yellow and yellowish brown weaved in while it's wet. That's when you're ready. So I'm gonna start kind of painting the base color. Is the brown. So this is where, you know, we start to take our time a little more as we're getting closer to the details. but having our base color of the brown helps with the basket weaving. I even like to add a little bit of black around the edges of the basket and I will display that in just a second. But we wanna make sure to take our time and paint right up against our bike areas. Our flowers, the edges of the flowers. And I like to then go in with my round brush for adding some darkness to the edge of the basket and kind of in between. So I'm gonna grab my smaller brush here. While the paint is wet, you wanna do this while the paint is wet because you're kind of, you're kind of doing it like you are shading. So I'm taking the black and I'm gonna shade around, kind of like underneath where the flowers are laying on the basket, like overhanging, almost like a shadow. Cause it, it kind of is. <laughs> So I'm almost like I'm outlining. Okay, you want to take your time. As you're kind of doing that shadow outline.
And then I like to kind of do that outline of black a little bit at the bottom of the basket too. I don't do an outline like, um, kind of like a marker outline, I call it, right? You want it to be kind of subdued so that it's very dark brown. And then you're going to take your black and you're going to kind of make black lines across your basket. And then in between those lines, you're going to be painting sort of dashes of the different colors. So yellow and yellow brown specifically. And add a little bit of white to the yellow if you want to. Then I like to also almost like make it a, a gingham pattern with the black as lines, but then they're going to serve as your shadow to the sections of the basket as you paint over those sections. And again, those can be combinations of yellowish brown. Kind of showing that now I'm mixing in the yellow with the brown. You can even do some orange using um, your red and yellow. You can do that too for some of the some of the colors of the basket weaving sections. So this is the part we're doing. Basically, you make that, you know, you make the stripes, kind of like the gingham pattern, and then you color in, in between, using your yellowish brown. And then I like to add a third color after this for like the highlight. Usually a little bit more of a lighter yellow part. But I'm taking my round brush and just painting in between each of the black lines, kind of like painting in between the squares. And then I go back again and kind of make it a little more looser so that it doesn't look like it's squares as much. So that was my mix of the yellowish, kind of the yellowish brown. But now I'm gonna go in with brown, just brown. And I'm gonna start kind of painting streaky lines across 
the tops of the boxes of those colors so that it's still gonna make it a little less boxy. And then I'm gonna add some yellow and white. Oops, I just thought I was talking about yellow and then I just went in for the yellow. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna go in and mix some yellow and white so that it's a lighter yellow. And it's it's very, I have a lot of paint on my brush here and I'm gonna pull sort of into the black parts of the basket so that it's not a perfect, they're not little perfect squares anymore. The little weaves of color. A little more yellow. So it's almost like you're painting over a lot of the black, but you want to leave. You want to leave some of that black so that it looks like it's being separated. And it will give you that basket weave look. And then I'm going to add some brown. And if you feel like you have too much of a basket weave look, you can always go back and add in a little more dark brown and a little bit with the black too. Let me try that. I'm going to add a little bit here and kind of like go in between just to make some more of the dark spaces kind of pop out. You can do that too. And then when you're ready, we start with the black tire too. And I like to use my small brush to kind of outline it a little bit. And we obviously, we go back with some gray after, but first just kind of outlining that part you can also at this point go in and paint the circular area that is supposed to symbolize sort of the bicycle chain area. 
you can go ahead and paint that black for now too. And again, we'll go back with some, when we mix gray and a little bit of turquoise. And you wanna make sure to paint in between your bicycle areas, you know, in between the spokes. If you didn't bring your stripes down, which I forgot to do. <laughs> I'm looking at going, why does this look strange? Oh, I didn't bring my background color into it. Oops. So I'm doing that now before I do anything else. Not sure how I forgot that. But there you have it. I feel like this is kind of a simple painting because it's rather loose. It's just a bit of detail, which makes it fun. And you have to take your time around some of the parts. Okay. Back to painting the tire. I also like to kind of jump in with my flat brush with the tire and just kind of rotate it. So whatever you're comfortable with, if you're more comfortable with a flat brush and the wideness of it and just turning it, if not, you can go in with your detail brush. I like to do a mixture of both. The other thing that can be helpful is to turn your painting as you're working on each section. If you're trying to get something precise, sometimes it's helpful to do that.
And while you have the black on your brush, you can also take the opportunity to paint the, um, the handlebars up above too. We are gonna give them a gray highlight afterward. like there's so much concentration that comes with you know when two edges meet especially when using the black <laughs> with the tires Kind of nice that it's still light out. I've noticed that it's getting darker earlier than nine o'clock, which always makes me a little sad. Even though I love the fall, I've mentioned, I do like more of a light in the summer. Now I'm going to go back and start to add the black for the handlebars. And take your time making the edges nice and crisp. Especially when your bicycle handle and this other section, the other handlebar are wet, 
This is when you can go in using black and white, a mixture, so that you get a gray for a little bit of the sheen on the metal. The other thing is on the metal part, You want to make that highlight going towards the edge, the outside of your handlebars there. You can even blend it a little bit, a little bit lighter. So you may have to go back and kind of streak it a little bit. And then same the other one. And then you're going to do same to your tire. Except with that, it kind of went choppy. with the gray and white. So it kind of looked like, you know, sort of the, the tire texture, painting it in little dashes on top of the black. And again, that's gray and white on top of the black. We're also going to make sure that we paint the white wall of the tire because then we paint a very thin light blue in between that white wall. And I know the canvas is already white, but I like to have it. It's kind of more freshly painted, freshly white when you add the actual white. Yeah, at this stage, I like to also add that mentioned, you know, having the gray on the circular area around the tire. So I like to kind of do that too. To go back with a little bit black. chain part, the part that holds the tire together.
And we're getting towards the last few spots here. And add some of that turquoise to the white wall of the tire in just a very faint, thin line. And then the color for the actual bike is that turquoise and just a little bit of black so that you get this darker, kind of like bluish gray. And it depends on how much of the turquoise and how much of the black you use. Mine is coming out a little bit darker than I like, so I'm going to add a little more turquoise. Let's see. Yep, that's the color. When you're ready, you're going to go in for that color very carefully paint it we also outline these sections in black you don't have to if you don't want to I just found I kind of wanted to do that when I made this And taking your time. You can even add a highlight here on these bicycle, you know, these bicycle parts. It's okay. Again, I didn't, but you can if you like. Gives it a little more realism. She can lighten up my color just a little bit. On the outside, give it a little bit of a highlight so that it reads that it has some volume to it. You know, and you can do the same thing on the inside of each of the bicycle areas. You can make it a little bit darker of a color on the inside because there would be a shadow there.
And I'm going to outline the bike in black. So again, this is something else you don't have to do, but I like to kind of outline the inside of the spoke area with a real thin line of black. And then you can also create your spokes. You know, with a very fine point, a little bit of paint on the tip of your brush and just very lightly touch your canvas, almost like you're hovering a little bit above so that you get that straight thin line. Now it gets really thick. And then this is also where you can outline, add some black lines in your bicycle. I don't like to outline the whole thing, I kind of outline the sections where it meets the actual main frame of the bicycle. I guess I did kind of on this, on this one in particular, I kind of outlined it a bit more than in my original. Like so. And when you're ready, you get to do like big swirly colors of flowers as well. Using your big brush. Obviously, you have to be careful at this point of the things that you've already painted, meaning right near your bicycle. Okay, I'm going to do a mixture and add a little bit of orange to mine. But you can have fun with this part too. big swirls of color. And I may have mentioned that the green is actually a combination of your yellow and your turquoise for your green. Kind of is like this limish green for the leaves. Even add a little bit of white to that to make it a little bit lighter.
And your last part is going to be, you know, adding some lighter swirls in your, your flowers before you add some black outlining to them. I kind of accentuate the petals a little bit, sort of the shape. Again, I'm kind of doing almost like rose, kind of like roses. Again, I made these flowers up, so. <laughs> June, we want to see what you did in watercolor. Well, you know I'm done. Oh, I know you're done. You just, you're, I think you're I staying took my the shower. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to be done. Being, so I was like, oh, I'll just go take my shower because it's only the two of, I just feel kind of, you know. I knew you did. I was like, she's staying on because she feels bad. You're such oh, a good yeah. friend. You're so funny. Uh -huh. And you know, mine mine is actually the closest to yours I've ever done in a long time. Really? You're gonna be shocked. Yeah. I am gonna be shocked. Mine is its own unique painting as usual. I love that though. I I always say Anita is the inspiration to get us to do something. Right. You she always Aww. says, do whatever you want. So that's what I do. I well, yeah, that. I mean, you know, you don't necessarily it's more to get somebody to inspire you. That's what my problem is. I just need the inspiration a lot of times. Yeah. To do something. Yeah. yeah. I hear you. I'm kind of the same way. And that's why I think it's so funny because I tell June all the time, I have trouble like thinking of ideas for, for my programs like right away. It takes my brain like forever. And then all of a sudden I get really inspired when I, I think it's really collaborating. I think that's the problem is I actually need somebody to collaborate and talk about it with. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would think you need just something to get started. And then once your ideas flow, they just keep going. I do. I do <laughs> some, like yeah. sometimes. sometimes it's hard to get started. Yeah, I do. I do. And I talk about it with my husband, but my husband's not artsy. <laughs> so yeah, but he's a nice guy. He is. A, oh, he is a nice guy. Absolutely. <laughs> he is. But he's really funny. Like, I'll say, what do you think of this? And he's like, eh, I don't know. I guess that's good. <laughs> like, well, wait, what's wrong with it? And he's like, well, I don't know. Nothing. Uh, all right. I'm going to remove my spotlight then. Did you stop the recording yet? I should stop the recording too. Let me do that. Yeah. Thank you. Now that we're yakking. Yeah, it's okay. I know. Stop recording. <laughs>